Omega rooms. They're extremely fun rooms with absolutely no mobs and a ton of loot. They also look absolutely incredible. So what we're going to do today is have a look at all of the Omega rooms, look if there's any sort of hidden areas or any secrets to the Omega rooms so you can loot them more efficiently and then you're not sort of panicking when you come into the rooms not knowing what to do. Now the base chance of getting an Omega room is 2% and then each Omega room has its own weighting on how rare it is. So we're going to start with the most common Omega room, the Puzzle Room. Now the Puzzle Room is a returning room room from 1.16 although it has some differences. As you run around the room you're going to see these question marks on the floor. Now these are all different chests. Now as you go around mining these you'll see that sometimes when you break open one of these chests you will get one of these puzzle pieces. These puzzle pieces correspond to the blocks that are in the center up here. So the blue ones are the most common, followed by the yellows, then the pinks, and then the greens. You can transfer these between vaults as well. So if you collect a bunch of them and you've got more than you need to complete the puzzle in the middle, then make sure you keep them in a backpack or something like that so that you can bring them into future vaults. And it's really important to note that you are not guaranteed to get the blocks that you need to complete this puzzle in the middle So it might take you at least a couple of volts in order to finish them But once you have the correct blocks you can put them all in the spaces that they need to go and then click one of the buttons And what will happen is a bunch of chests will spawn now these are always gilded chests so that you can just vein mine them up like this and then get all of the loot. And as you can see, we got a decent amount of stuff, especially the vault diamonds. Normally, if you don't get a puzzle piece in one of the chests, then you will also get some random wooden chest loot as well. But currently, it is a little bit bug, so it is just a blank chest, but I'm sure that will be fixed in the next patch. Okay, moving on to our second room, the vendor room, or as I like to call it, the little shopping town. So there are a few variations of this room, but they all follow the same basic concept. Some have multiple floors, some only have one, some have a very small amount of shops, but each of them is worth looting for sure and that is because of these things these are shopping pedestals they are honestly fantastic what you need to do is exchange some of your vault currency so that's the vault gold silver or bronze in order to buy what is on the pedestal so if we take our vault silver and right click there we purchased the mod box for 14 silver and as you run around the room you'll see different pedestals with different items so make sure that you are bringing some vault gold into the vaults with you and you can get some really cool stuff in here including the jewel that you need to upgrade your vault pickaxes. You can also find the occasional wooden chest or random other chest about, but in general you want to be focusing on those pedestals. Now there is a skill that will really help with this as well. The bartering talent that you can get once you hit level 50 will allow you to reduce the cost of these pedestals all the way up to 50% if you throw a bunch of points into it. Now personally, by the time you hit level 50, probably not going to be worth it, but expect that to be rebalanced at some point in the future. But in general, this room is absolutely fantastic and the main reason that you want to be bringing some gold in with you because you can save yourself a bunch of time. Okay, next one. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the blacksmith's castle. Honestly, one of the best designed rooms in this entire game. Now, as you come into the blacksmith's castle, you are going to be wanting to check every single corner because you will find ornate chests all over the place. Some rooms even have ladders that go up towards the top of the room just so that you've got access to even more of these chests. There's also multiple floors to this. So you can go up to the higher level, and you will find even more ornate chests here. And these are the main things that you're gonna to wanna to be focusing on as you are going around and looting. Although you can get yourself a lovely Santa hat, but you have to wear Rowan's face if you want to use it. Make sure that if you see a ladder, you are climbing it, you will find access to different areas like this little walkway here, which will lead you to even more ladders and those ladders will lead you to loot. Now, just to save you some time, it is definitely not worth coming down to the moat area. It doesn't have any special loot. It would be kind of cool if it did, but unfortunately it doesn't. But it is definitely worth going down into the basement and there are several basement floors. 
And once again, all of the levels are jam-packed full of these ornate chests, and you can also pick yourself up some anvils and some spare furnaces if you need to. There's also this sort of larder room that you can go to, which has a bunch of potatoes, carrots, apples, and wheat in it. If you want to loot these just for some extra resources, then go ahead, but the main focus of this room is the ornate chests. Three rooms down, four to go. And this next one that we're going to look at is another returning one from 1.16, although it is very different and that is the paint bucket room now you'll see dotted around there are a bunch of paint buckets and there's also some paint drops over there now these are very different from 1.16 because inside the paint buckets you'll see that there is actually chests and you can get some pretty good stuff in here we've got some vault gear that we've found so it's definitely worth having a look inside these buckets and you will find different types of chests whether they're wooden chests or nate chests anything like that if you're going inside there though be a little bit careful because the chests can be trapped and if you're in a really enclosed area it can be very dangerous now if we have a look inside the paint drops you'll see that you actually do have a chance at getting some of the ores they they are not quite as plentiful as they used to be but you can still get a decent amount in there as long as you go around all of the paint drops and the good news is now you don't get any of those junk blocks in there either so that's a big improvement now if we go down to the bottom area here you're going to see there's a bunch more paint buckets that you can open to find even more chests and you'll also find plenty of piles of coins that you can just mine up and get all of that lovely currency that you can spend in the village shops this room can be incredibly lucrative as long as you do all of the paint buckets the paint drops and get the coin piles that are down below so it's definitely worth looting if you get a chance but try and get this done as quick as possible again just be careful in those very enclosed spaces now sometimes the vaults can get a little bit cramped but luckily this next room doesn't take up mushroom mushroom it's it's the mushroom room get it Okay, enough corny jokes. Now, this room is really interesting because there are a lot of chests here, but they are all very, very well hidden. For example, you can find some up inside the leaves. You can find some inside the mushrooms and you can find some way down in the bottom either hanging there or you can even find them in the caps of the little mushrooms as well but did you notice something about all of those chests that's right they are all living chests and this mushroom room is the best place to find your living chests. So if you're after knowledge stars, then this place is absolutely fantastic. I'd strongly recommend starting at the bottom, making sure that you loot all of the chests that you can see that are hanging from the ceiling here. There's also a bunch of bone blocks, which are really, really useful in 1.18 because Twerker just doesn't work very well. I'll stop hating on Twerker when it's actually been buffed. But once you've done the low levels, start making your way up and you're going to want to start sort of pillaring up until you can get up to this higher level and once you find a chest just make yourself a bridge over to it loot that one and then just look for another chest like those over there there's not much more to the room than that but it is 100% worth your time going around and collecting all the living chests you are not going to find a higher concentration of living chests in any other room in the game so it's time for the penultimate room which one is the second rarest one in the vault well it's the mine room and i know most of you thought that this was the rarest but it is actually not the rarest one which means we still have one more to go but even if the mine room isn't the rarest it is one of the best purely for this reason you can find a ridiculous amount of ores just buried inside the walls now i've covered this room a bunch of times but i know that some of you are completely new to vault hunters so let me give you a quick breakdown you'll start in this entrance level and you will see occasionally different ores in the walls you should definitely collect those but there are also other levels to the mine that you may not have noticed when you came in the easiest way to find these is to look for one of these mineshaft things because you can go up and down very very easily obviously you'll need to use dash you can't just fly about but this will give you access to new floors and even more of the ores now there isn't just ores in the walls that you can see 
You can also vein mine out some of the others and you will find other rows around hidden behind normal cobble blocks or whatever blocks your mines are made out of. Ideally, you'll find one of these very early into your vault and you can spend pretty much your entire vault just mining these up. And it's actually one of the best ways to get experience in Vault Hunters is mining these ores. So literally just go around, start vein mining everything that you can, get all of the different ores that are stuck behind the walls. You'll also occasionally come across these mine carts. The mine carts can also have ores in them, especially Laramar and Beniatite. So make sure that you are breaking these blocks and emptying the mine carts as much as you possibly can. As you can see here, there are four levels to the mine shaft you've got the bottom two layers then the ground floor that you need to get out on and then one floor above previously you used to be able to use the vault coordinates to get out and know exactly where the exits were but now you can't do that so just make sure you keep track of what floor you're on okay it is time what is the rarest omega room in vault hunters if you know your omega rooms you know what this one is it is the golden dig site room. Now this might confuse some of you because you might be thinking, you know what, I've been in dig site rooms, it didn't quite look like this and I'm pretty sure they were a little bit more common. Well, you're not going crazy. There's actually two types of dig site rooms. There's a challenge dig site room which has mob spawners and a load of mobs that can attack you and you have the golden dig site room, which is an omega room with absolutely no mobs. Now this room is extremely simple. It's a dig site, you've just gotta dig. And if you've got vein miner, it makes life so much easier because you can just remove two stacks of blocks every time that you mine one. And this is what the room looks like when you have removed the sand. Now, this is only one quarter of the room that I've removed. You can go into the next section, just go straight through the wall and then start digging this out. But you will find a ridiculous, and I mean just an absolutely ridiculous amount of wooden chests in here. If you're wanting wooden chests for carbon or something like that, then this room is absolutely fantastic for you. There are so, so many wooden chests. I mean, just look at all of those, and that is only one quarter. Absolutely insane. But there's a very, very, very important caveat here. This room will take you a ridiculous amount of time to clear out if you do not have vein miner. So even though this is the rarest room in the entire game, you want to be thinking very carefully whether you want to start mining this out if you don't have any way to clear this efficiently. Now that we don't have mining gadgets or destruction gadgets, it's basically vein miner or nothing really. So just make sure you're evaluating it properly. Last thing you want to do is only come out with a couple of chests worth of stuff when you could be finding another omega room or even a challenge room to loot more efficiently. And also, so make sure you have a good way of dealing with the yellow concrete powder. A really good way to deal with it is to use the pouches void upgrade. If you need to know more about that, I will link the video at the end of the description. We just did a pouches guide a few days ago, so fantastic timing. Hopefully this has been helpful for you all. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to like it. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Or even if you've been here a while, just check that you are subscribed. Thanks for watching everyone. I've been Hellfire Mage and I will see you next time.